It's Friday, May the 16th, 2014. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and this is episode number 34 of TEN, Transport Evolved News, for the week beginning May the 12th, 2014. Last week, we told you that deliveries of the BMW i3 had officially started in the US, with our very own Michael Thwaite being one of the first people to pick up an all-electric i3. But does the new i3 stand up to the outgoing Active E, the car BMW leased to members of the public as a test bed for its first mass-produced car? To find out, Michael pitted his new ride against well-known EV advocate Tom Malogny's Active E. The results were pretty conclusive. While the outgoing Active E can travel further per charge due to a larger capacity battery pack, the i3 wins hands down in the efficiency stakes, achieving a massive 5.4 miles per kilowatt hour. To read the report in full, head over to www.transportevolved.com. Fiat's first and probably last plug-in car for a while, the diminutive Fiat 500e, was officially recalled this week with a problem with its power inverter module, which could result in a loss of power. The issue stems from something Fiat's calling coolant seepage inside the unit, in which cooling fluid designed to keep the power inverter module cool was leaking onto sensitive electronics, leading to short circuits and ultimately the car powering itself off for safety. Fiat says it will replace the offending units free of charge under warranty and owners will be contacted in due course to arrange the fix. It was once a deal made in heaven. A young, energetic and amazingly brilliant startup electric automaker from California and a wealthy, traditional automaker from Japan in need of an electric car to call its own. And so the relationship between Tesla and Toyota was born. But now... Tesla has confirmed that the relationship is unfortunately coming to a natural end as it meets the end of the quoted 2,600 Toyota RAV4 EVs it agreed to produce battery packs and drivetrains for. Toyota is less forthcoming about the end of its compliance car relationship with Tesla, but given it's promising to launch a hydrogen fuel cell car for 2015 that would satisfy the very same California zero emissions mandate the RAV4 EV was commissioned to meet, it's safe to say we won't be seeing another Toyota plug-in for a while. Staying with Toyota, or rather its luxury Lexus brand, there's some more news on those anti-EV, pro-hybrid and pro-hydrogen ads we told you about last week. Plug-in America, the US-based electric vehicle advocacy group, took off the gloves this week in response to the factually incorrect, fear-mongering Lexus ads, telling Toyota that 1990 called and they wanted their ads back. And Lexus actually apologised. Okay, so it's only a start. But Lexus says it will review all of its ads and adjust them as necessary to ensure that they at least contain factually correct information. Although there's no news on whether it will be about being nice about EVs. So don't hold your breath on that one. As we barrel headlong into the 21st century, there isn't a tech or car company out there who hasn't explored some form of autonomous driving technology, from Nissan and Tesla through to Google and IBM. But now chip manufacturer Intel has stepped up to take part in the self-driving revolution with an investment of an undisclosed amount of money in Japanese firm ZMP. ZMP, who made its name in 2006 with a humanoid robot called Nuvo, is currently working on a self-driving car based on a low-speed Japanese electric vehicle. While it might not be quite as stylish to look at as other self-driving prototypes and concepts we've seen, it's likely that Intel's investment, made from its Capital Connected Car Fund, will be Intel's way into this rapidly growing industry. We go to car dealerships to buy cars, but before we buy them, we generally like to give them a little test drive first. So you'd expect auto dealers to actually designate at least one of each car they sell to the duty of being a test drive car. Except that doesn't always happen because test drive cars can't be sold on as new vehicles, and the less popular the car is in the first place, the less likely dealers are going to be to classify one of their stock as an official test drive car. At $75,000, the Cadillac ELR Extended Range Luxury Coupe is just one such car. But GM has such a high stock of cars waiting to be sold that it started to offer dealerships and customers alike massive incentives for giving the ELR a go. Dealers get $5,000 for turning an ELR into a test drive vehicle, while buyers can now get up to $3,000 off list price. So if you're tempted to buy one, now's the time. 
We're pretty sure you've heard of the Michelin Man before, but have you heard of Hydrogen Man? No, it's not a new song by They Might Be Giants. It's what you get when tyre manufacturer Michelin invests an undisclosed but significant amount of money in fuel cell manufacturer Symbio. Announced this week, the investment partnership will allow Symbio to continue trials currently underway with the French post office, where small hydrogen fuel cells are being used as range extended engines for specially modified Kangoo ZE electric vans. It may even herald a future where range extended EVs are made up of traditional electric drivetrains married with hydrogen fuel cell range extenders. What do you think? There are few online webcomics as well known as the oatmeal. Quirky, fun and insightful, its artist Matthew Inman can make you laugh and make you think in ways you didn't think were possible. Oh, and he's a Tesla fan, both the original inventor and of the electric car company which shares Tesla's name. Consequentially, it's no surprise that Inman owns and loves his Tesla Model S. To try and express what it's like to own a Tesla, Inman made his own personal Model S the subject of a fantastic oatmeal post this week, covering everything from the EV basics through to the driving experience. Oh, and a few names, because in his words, Model S just doesn't cut it. Our favourite? The intergalactic spaceboat of light and wonder. If you haven't read it yet, go to the oatmeal and read it now, or rather at the end of this show. You won't be disappointed. If you live in Slovakia or happen to be going there in an electric car, a brand new Slovak-wide rapid charging network opened this week, and I was there to see it. Owned and operated by Greenway, the Slovak battery swap company, which leases out large commercial vans with battery swap capabilities, the rapid charging network extends from Bratislava in the west to Kosice in the east. The launch of the new network was heralded by a 10-strong Nissan Leaf convoy all the way across the country, visiting each and every rapid charger along the way. Unfortunately, there were a few hiccups on the day, with the notoriously unreliable DBT rapid chargers doing what they do best, breaking down. But hey, at least Slovakia now has a charging infrastructure that matches that found in other European countries. Do you have long flowing hair? Do you like wearing sandals? Do you like hugging trees? If the answer is yes, then the chances are that you quite like the idea of buying and driving an electric car. But here's a bit of friendly advice for you if you're choosing a car that suits your needs. Don't buy a Cadillac ELR. That's because, in the words of one Cadillac executive this week, the luxury $75,000 luxury plug-in sedan isn't designed for tree huggers. Because, well, tree huggers supposedly don't buy luxury coupes. So do yourself a favour. If you can afford a Cadillac ELR and you want a plug-in car, go with a Tesla instead, okay? That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. And in the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print. Subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube. And join us for our talk show later today. Where we'll be discussing these stories and others on Transport Evolved. And it's our 200th episode. Yay! I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and until next time, stay juiced up.